Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So you've just received your Diploma in Financial Studies results. It contains a mixture of raw marks and UMS scores, but you want to know how that relates to actual grades. In this video, we're going to cover just that. Let's get into it. So you've got your results slip. On there it says the raw mark you got in each of the units, your Part A, Part B result for each of the units. That will be converted into a UMS score. And only when you've converted into a UMS score can you work out the final grade you'll be given. Let's check out those three steps in a bit more detail. Now, on your screen, you can see the grade boundaries for the raw marks out of 35 for Part A in the June 2022 session. So the June 2022 session, you needed 32 marks for an A star, 28 for an A, B, 25 marks out of 35, etc. If you want to know it in percentage terms, 91, 80, 71 for B, etc. That's for part A, which is the multiple choice out of 35. The second part, part B, is of course a written paper out of 65. And in June 2022, the sitting for unit 2, you needed 38 marks. 38 marks out of 65 for an A star, equivalent to 58%. 33 marks for an A, equivalent to 51%. 45 for B, etc. So, how do you calculate your total grade for each of the Certificate in Financial Studies units? Well, you add the two parts together. So, for this June 2022 sitting of Unit 2, you add your Part A to your Part B and you get a session total. In this case, 32 plus 38 would have got you 70% or 70 out of 100, the equivalent of an A star. 61% for an A, 54 for a B, etc. However, grade boundaries change each session. It's important to note that these on the screen are the grade boundaries for June 2022. Of course, that was the sitting of Unit 2. We can see how much the grade boundaries change by looking on the screen. So these are the grade boundaries for Unit 1, sittings all the way back to March 2018. We can see for an A star, back in 2018, you needed 73 out of 100 total marks. By March 2022, it had gone down to 72. And that is uh, reflected in A, B, C and D grades as well. They've all gone down one or two marks. E, however, on the flip side, has remained constant at 33 out of 100. For the Unit 2 exam you took in Year 12, or whenever you did the Certificate in Financial Studies, likewise, similar trends. Back in 2018, for the Unit 2 exam, you needed 73 out of 100 to get an A star, 64 for an A, etc. By the time 2022 came about, you only needed 70, or 61 in the case of an A. The reason you might be thinking, why do the raw mark grade boundaries change? Well, it's because each session you might have relatively easier or more difficult questions. So the reason why the raw mark grade boundaries change each session is to reflect the relative difficulty of the questions within that paper compared to other exam sessions. So you've got your raw marks and you've worked out the UMS for your certificate in financial studies. What about the diploma in financial studies, the second year of this qualification? Well, once again, you'll be doing the part A, which is out of 35 for each of the units three and four. Now for the unit four, the grade boundaries for June 2022 sitting are on your screen. So to get an A star out of 35, you needed 32, similar to actually the certificate in financial studies, 28 for an A, 25 for a B, etc. Slightly different when it comes to Part B, actually slightly higher than the Certificate in Financial Studies. So for the second year, June 2022 sitting of Unit 4, you needed 40 out of 65 for the A star boundary. 36, 55% for an A, 31 or 48% for B, etc. And of course, to work out the total grade you got in each of the units, it'll be out of 100, and in June 2022 at least, this was the grade boundaries, the raw mark grade boundaries for each grade. So to get an A star, you needed 72 out of 100, 64 for an A, 56 for B, 48 for C, etc. But once again, as we know, the grade boundaries will change each session. And you can see evidence of that on your screen right now. These are the Unit 3 sittings. Now that goes all the way back to March 2018. Back then, you needed 73 for an A star. And it fluctuated ever so slightly, Jan 2019, 74, then back down to 73. And most recently, March 2022, you only needed 72 out of 100 for an A star, 63 for an A, 56 for a B, etc. 
Similar trend with the Unit 4 exams is the sustainability of the financial services system. So back in 2018, you needed 73 out of 100 to achieve an A-star grade. By the time June 2022 came around, you only needed 72, so slightly lower for the top grade boundary. Once again, the reason why these raw mark grade boundaries change each session is to reflect the relative difficulty of the questions within each paper compared to other exam sessions. So, you've got your raw mark. Let's see how that compares to the UMS mark you'll be given, and only then we can work out the final grade. So the UMS mark, for each of the four units you will have studied as part of the Diploma in Financial Studies, it carries a certain number of UMS, or Uniform Marking Scheme, points. Each of the units in the Certificate of Financial Studies carries 190 UMS max, whereas in 3 and 4, on the second year of the qualification, which will get you a diploma, it carries a maximum of 210 UMS. So as you can see there, the maximum mark you can get if you got 100% in all four units would be 800 UMS in total. So how do we work out the UMS? Well, it's different actually for the CEFS and the Diploma in Financial Studies because of course the UMS equivalent in Certificate of Financial Studies is a maximum of 190 whereas the UMS equivalent in the Diploma is 210. So as you can see here, a combination of Part A and Part B raw marks are used to create the overall UMS. What happens if you do resets? Well, the good news is, for the final unit grade, the best combination of Part A and Part B are applied. When calculating UMS, the exam boards see how far into the UMS boundary a raw mark is. So, for example, if we look at the Diploma in Financial Studies, for an E, it is bef between 84 UMS and 105 UMS, or 34 and 42 raw marks. So, of course, if we got 41 raw marks towards the top of the raw mark band, it's going to have a UMS mark towards the top of that grade band. So 41 raw marks would equate somewhere between 103 and 104 UMS equivalent, the top UMS grade for E. Now, you've calculated how many raw marks you got in total, and you want to know exactly how many UMS you've got for each of the units. Well, as I said earlier, the raw mark grade boundaries can change because each year different types of questions will be asked. And if there's more difficult questions asked in a particular session, then the grade boundaries tend to be slightly more lenient, shall we say. Teachers and exams officers have access to something called the Grade Boundary Report, which gives the exact grade boundaries for each sitting. That's where I got the information shown earlier. So you want to ask your teacher or exams officer what are the specific raw mark grade boundaries for the session that you have just sit. The UMS grade boundaries on the other hand do not change for each exam session. So whereas the raw mark boundary may change, it might go up and down ever so slightly, the UMS equivalent will remain the same every single session that is sat. So always for a diploma in financial studies for example, 189 to 210 will always be an A-star equivalent. So, how do you calculate the overall grade for your Diploma in Financial Studies? First of all, you take your two grades, your two UMS marks from Unit 1 and Unit 2 in the Certificate of Financial Studies, and you add them to the two UMS marks for your Units 3 and 4, your Diploma in Financial Studies, the second year of the qualification. Once you total your maximum, which of course is out of a maximum of 800, you compare it to what is in the grid on your screen. So, you've added them all up, and if you've got a grade over 720 UMS, congratulations, you have been awarded an A star overall. 640 would equate to an A overall, 560 a B, and so on. Well done if you got the grade you were hoping for, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. LIBF are shortly going to be releasing the case study. I'm going to be filming full evaluations of each case study as well as model answers. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell to be notified of these future videos.